Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us wherever you are watching from, uh, from your homes, on your TVs, on your phones, on your tablets. I want to give a special welcome and shout out to our friends at Donovan Prison and Otay Mesa Detention Facility. We are so glad that you are with us and that we are able to broadcast our service on your TV System And this is the first week that Otay Mesa is joining us for services. And so we welcome you. We are so glad that all of you are with us in this moment. And we can't wait till the day that we can come to you in person uh, and hold services again. And really at all of our locations. But until then, I am so glad that we can continue to gather as the church and keep being the church in this format. Now, can you believe that we are going on 40 days since the stay-at-home order started? 40 days. And a lot has changed for all of us. I mean, every one of us are experiencing changes. Kids, all the kids that are maybe watching or in the room with their parents. Uh, I mean, you, you've gone through a lot. You are missing gathering with your friends and going to school. And even just kind of the mealtime routine uh, can get a little old. Maybe you're missing just some variety and you feel like Dennis in this comic strip. He says, can't we just go to a restaurant? I'm tired of eating all the groceries. Some of us are just missing going out to eat. And parents, life has changed for you through this. And it's not easy, is it? I mean, you've become the constant kids entertainment committee, right? You've also become, now that school has started back up, you've become, you know, part-time uh, full or full-time teacher. Add that to the list of all the other things that you are doing. Here's a great meme I saw uh, just to help you with a physical education idea this week. Check it out. Parents, you're welcome for putting that idea in your kid's mind. Kids, just go for it. It'd be a ton of fun. Uh, and then uh, when it comes to work, I mean, work has changed for so many of us. Many of us, it's gone to online. And so we're having to learn how to do those online meetings well. And it is really important, you know how to do it, what buttons to hit, when to push them, because an online meeting can go bad real quick if you're not careful. Kind of like this guy. Goodbye. All right. Talk to you guys Bye. soon. Bye. See you guys. Tony! <laughs> Can you hear us? Tony! Oh no! Tony! Jen, call him! Oh my gosh! I'm going to do my pants! Hold on, Text a couple of pictures of that. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. oh boy. <laughs> What's up? Tony, I can see you when you're We can all there. see you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's only a couple rules when it comes to online meeting. First of all, make sure you wear pants, right? Uh, and then secondly, make sure you hit the leave meeting button. I would also add when you're not talking, make sure you are on mute, okay? Uh, now, even churches and pastors and priests are struggling with this new reality we're all having to live in. Um, I'm going to show you a video that this is Father Paolo Longo. He is a parish priest in Italy who accidentally activated the face filter features when he was preaching live on Facebook. Watch this. Buonasera. Ci ritroviamo insieme per pregare 
io in chiesa e voi a casa. Oggi è venerdì di Quaresima e vogliamo pregare con la Via Crucis e la benedizione eucaristica. Chiedendo al Signore che ci aiuti a seguirlo sulla via che lui stesso ha percorso, la via della croce. Vogliamo affidare al Signore tutte le nostre sofferenze, le nostre difficoltà, i momenti difficili che stiamo vivendo, in modo particolare in questo momento. Preghiamo perché il Signore ci liberi da tutti questi mali e in modo particolare dai nostri peccati. Now I show you those first of all just because they're funny, right? And I think we can all use a good laugh. But the second reason I show those to you is because I want you to know right now in this moment in time, it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to not be okay. And there's a lot of us right now that we are frustrated. We are grieving the loss of some things. And I want you to know it is okay to be tired. It is okay to, to, be, to be frustrated. It is okay to not be okay. Because I know there's a lot of people that aren't okay right now. I know many of you have lost jobs or had income change significantly. I know small business owners in our church that, that are, have an uncertain future, wondering if their business will survive the longer this goes. I know we have high school and college students that are grieving the loss of, of some of their spring sports or, or grieving the loss of their graduation or a lot of those senior events that just are now are not going to be. And I think all of us are grieving the loss of extended family member. We're just missing being together with friends and family. All of us are facing difficult challenges during this season. But I want you to know God doesn't want us to stay alone in our frustration or in our grief or in our weariness. He wants to be with us in it. He wants to help us grow through it. So we are not bitter, but better when we get on the other side of it. And that is why we're doing this 23 series. If you're just joining us this week, no, this series is not based on Michael Jordan. Although the documentary last week was awesome. And I can't wait to watch it again this week. Uh, this series, 23, is based on Psalm 23, which is the goat, if you will, the greatest of all time scripture passages when it comes to a passage of scripture that has offered hope and comfort during difficult times to people generation after generation. And so we're looking at Psalm 23. Now, even if you're not a Bible person or a Jesus person, I bet you know Psalm 23. You've at least heard it before. And so as we begin in just this second week, um, I want us to read Psalm 23 out loud together. Everybody, no matter where you are, in your home, in your cell, everybody, we're going to read this out loud together. Okay, Psalm 23, ready, begin. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now remember, last week we said the goal is not just to know the words of Psalm 23. The goal isn't even to have the words memorized of Psalm 23. Uh, many people do that. Many people know it. Many people have it memorized. But our goal in this series is to really believe the words of Psalm 23 and then live as if they were true. In fact, here is what this series is all about. I just want to remind you, in case you're just joining us this week, or remind you if you were with us last week, uh, the big idea of this series is all about living a with God life. That's what Psalm 23 is about. That there is this with God life waiting for you and waiting for me. God wants to be with you every single day. 
you might not know this, but Christianity is not about just getting into heaven someday. A lot of people think that that's what it's all about. Well, that, that, that is a really good end benefit. But really, Christianity, here's what it's about. It's about Jesus people learning to live with God now and then bringing what God has, some of heaven, to earth. Let me just remind you of that through the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you learned it as the Our Father. How does it go? What does it say? It says, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done where? On what? Say it out loud earth as it is in heaven. Jesus was teaching us to pray that some of what God has, his will and his way, which is perfectly done in heaven, that that would begin to happen on this earth and in our lives. That is what the with God life is all about. And there is a with God life waiting for you. And that is not a life just adding religion to your life. Religion is not meant to be, a, it's not just adding a religious compartment or component. You see, this with God life is about God being with us in all things and through all things. And that's the invitation of Psalm 23. You see, the only way to experience the life that Psalm 23 talks about is to believe in the God of Psalm 23, that he is actually with you all the time. And, and that's why verse one starts with David introducing us, who, David who wrote the psalm. Uh, he introduces us to this metaphor of God as a shepherd because he wants us to know that even though the Lord, Yahweh, is almighty and powerful, at the exact same time, he is personal and loving like a good shepherd. He leads and guides our lives. He protects our lives. He directs us to places. And that is what a shepherd does. Remember last week, we, we said that Jesus himself called himself the good shepherd. Let me show it to you. John 10, 11. Here's the words of Jesus. He said, I am the what? Say it out loud. Good shepherd. And the good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. Jesus is our good shepherd. And today, as we look at verse two and the first part of verse three, I wanna show you three things. This has been kind of called the trilogy of Psalm 23, if you will. These three good things that God wants to bring in your life. These three things that Jesus, the good shepherd, wants to bring you. And here's the first one. Jesus, the good shepherd, wants to help me rest taking notes on the app. Maybe you didn't know you could do this. You can follow along with our app, uh, take some notes and send them to yourself later so you can remember this. Uh, Jesus, the good shepherd, wants to give me rest. Did you know God considers rest as important as work? Some people think God only smiles on them or is happy with them when they are busy. But the truth is God smiles on you and he is happy with you when you rest. Think about parents watching a baby or a young child sleep. When parents are looking at a baby taking a nap in the middle of the day, are they like, you lazy baby? <laughs> Would you get up and do something productive? No, what are, what are parents doing when they're looking at that beautiful little baby taking a nap or resting in the middle of the day? They're looking upon that child with happiness and with love. That's what they're doing. Their heart is full seeing their baby rest. Now, when they are teenagers and still sleeping at two in the afternoon, then you can say, get up, you lazy baby. <laughs> Do something productive. My point is this. God wants to give us rest. Let's look at the first part of verse two that tells us this. So verse two, here's what it says. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, in light of the shared experience we're all in in the stay-at-home order, something struck me about this verse that I don't know I really noticed before, but because of this shared experience at stay-at-home, here's what really stuck out to me. These words, he makes me, he makes me lie down. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like being made to do anything. In fact, my natural inclination is when somebody makes me do something, I want to actually do the opposite. And that's probably how many of you are too. But I, I want to maybe give you an opportunity to reframe 
these stay at home orders that we're all going through right now that have gone longer than I think any of us thought that they would. And I know they're, they're frustrating and it's a huge inconvenience, but I want to invite you to maybe look at it as an opportunity from Jesus himself. At least look at part of it that way. Could you see part of it as an invitation from Jesus that is saying, I want to give you a season to slow down the pace of your life so you can increase the peace in your life? Because that is what happens when we have rest. And I think before this, so many of us were going so fast for so long, there wasn't a lot of rest and there wasn't a lot of peace. You see, Jesus gives us an invitation, the good shepherd, to rest. And rest is really all about realizing this, that Jesus meets my physical needs. Jesus meets my physical needs. Your body needs rest. Think about it. Athletes don't train 24-7, do they? No, what do they do? They have periods where they work hard, they train, and then they rest. Your body needs rest. Did you know that God rested in the creation story? At the very beginning of the Bible, it says that he created and then on the seventh day, he rested. Why did God rest? Because he was wore out? No, he's God. He rested to model for his people this rhythm of work and rest. Jesus rested. Did you know that? God in the flesh that he had regular moments of silence and solitude. He had days where he was alone by himself. And so here's kind of my question to you is that if God rested and Jesus rested, don't you think you might need to also? And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, man, all I've been doing for 40 days is resting. I'm not talking about binge watching Tiger King. That might not be the kind of rest that scripture is talking about. You see, often resting, it is simply a posture of trust. It's a quietness of the mind. I don't know that you're really resting when we're scrolling through social media, but could there be God opportunity for you to rest from all the noise? I know my wife and I were talking about this um, just last week uh, in our living room, uh, kind of kitchen area, main living area of the house. Uh, we have a family calendar to keep track of everybody's activities. And right when this all happened, uh, we were in a, in a kind of a, a stage of life. We have three kids, one high school, one middle school, one grade school. And they were on, those three kids were on five different basketball teams, three of which I coached. And so our family calendar in the month of March, it was crazy looking. I mean, every day had stuff going on. You go look at that calendar now, there's nothing there. And so what I'm proposing is that could you look at this season, not just as an inconvenience or even a curse, if you will, but could you look at this season as an invitation from Jesus, an invitation for you to rest, an invitation for your kids to rest, an invitation for your family to rest. Jesus cares about your physical needs. You see, so Jesus, the good shepherd, Here's what he wants to help us do. First of all, he wants to help us rest. And then secondly, write this down. He wants to help us recover. Now these two go together. And the truth is that they build on one another. Let's keep reading verse two, because look what verse two does. It builds. It says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. And then he leads me beside quiet waters. Why is it people like going to parks with little ponds or lakes in them? Why is it that we like going for walks on the bay? or at the ocean, or along a stream, or along a river. Why do we like doing that? Because there is something calming about it. There's something relaxing about water. Why is it that people put fountains and and so you can kind of listen to water in your courtyards or in your backyard or on your patio? Why? So it gives you this calming sense. And God wants you and I to be in that state of mind when it comes to our emotions. Now, notice back in our verse, who does the leading here? If we want that kind of rest and recover, it says, he leads me. We have to let God lead our inner being, our inner self, 
our mind, our emotions to a place of calm and a place of peace. We have to follow him. That means we have to live in such a way that it results in being in those places when it comes to peace. You see, really, this is about realizing that Jesus meets my emotional needs. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. He meets my physical needs. But we also have a good shepherd who wants to meet my emotional needs. David is letting us know that God cares about us in our entirety, body, mind, and soul. We've talked about this many, many times around here before, that you are not just a body. You are an eternal being, a living soul who has a body. In fact, scripture teaches that there are three distinct parts to you. Did you know this? That you have a body, a physical being. You have a mind, you are an emotional being. And you have a soul, you are a spiritual being. And my mind and my emotions are feelings. And I want you to know today that God cares about your feelings. He wants to meet you in your anxiety. He wants to meet you in your grief. He wants to meet you in your depression. He wants to be with you in the middle of your doubts. God cares about you. This is what David is saying, that God cares about our body, that he cares about our mind, our emotions. I want to show you another classic passage of scripture. It's found in Isaiah chapter, chapter 40 that gives this incredible promise of what God does for people who trust him. In this passage, it says, trust him. David said, he leads me. We have to be willing to follow. It's the same principle in this passage. Look what it says in Isaiah chapter 40. It says, he, God, strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow weak. There is a promise of inner strength. Now, does this mean you can fly and that you can run a marathon if you haven't trained? That's not what this is speaking of. This is a metaphor, okay? If you haven't trained for a marathon, you're not going to be able to run a marathon. But I believe this is talking about an inner strength. In other words, that even when outwardly things are not going the way that you want them to go, inwardly, in our heart, in our mind, in our emotions, we can have an inner strength that does what? It helps us rise above it on wings as eagles and it can even help us run through it. That's what I believe the promise of this scripture is. You see, emotional health and strength are possible even in the middle of difficulty and trouble. Not because I'm strong enough or necessarily even because the circumstance has changed but because of who is with me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. So Jesus, the good shepherd, what does he do? Jesus, the good shepherd wants to help me rest. He wants to help me recover. And then here's the third one, write it down, restore. This is all about our soul. It's about the deepest places of what it means to be human. So let's finish off this trilogy of of the things that God wants us to do by looking at the rest of the scripture verse. Look what it says. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he refreshes my what? My soul. This is what God does for us. Now your soul is not just something that lives after your body dies. The truth is your soul is the most important part of you right now because it encompasses all of your life. Uh, Dallas Willard, a late uh, USC uh, philosophy professor, father of modern spiritual formation, one of his books is recommended in your resources if you're on the notes and you can follow along. But I want to show you what he says about your soul. The, The scripture says God wants to restore your soul. Well, what is your soul? It's all of what it means to be human. Look at what he says. What is running your life at any given moment is your what? Soul. Not your external circumstances. So what's running our life is not what's going on right now. Not your thoughts. Not your intentions. Not even your feelings. But your soul. The soul is that aspect of your whole being that correlates, integrates, 
and enlivens everything going on in the various dimensions of the self. The soul is the life center of human beings. Uh, what Dallas Willard is saying is that your soul is the operating system for your life. Right? Think about a computer. It's the hardware that makes every single thing work. Your soul is the deepest part of you of what it means to be human. And so if that is the reality, what is it that David is saying? He refreshes, he restores my soul. He's saying that those deepest places in us that often sometimes get damaged in this broken world, sometimes because of things that people have done to us and other times because of choices that we've made. Because do you know this world, it can damage your body, it can damage your emotions and it can damage your soul. But we have Jesus, a good shepherd who wants to do what? He wants to heal our body he wants to touch our emotions so that we can think right and feel right. And he wants to restore, bring to wholeness and health our very soul. And so in a world that will try to chip away at your soul, we have a God who wants to restore your soul so you can live out of the deepest places of yourself, out of wholeness and health. This is the promise that we have from Jesus. And here's what this is all about. This is really all about realizing that we have a God who doesn't just care about our physical needs, who doesn't just care about our emotional needs, but we have a God who also cares about, you see, Jesus meets my spiritual needs. Jesus meets my spiritual needs. Uh, let's remember how this psalm starts. Verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, right? And because the Lord is my shepherd, this almighty, all-powerful Yahweh, holy one, eternal self-sufficient being, who at the same time is personal and loving like a shepherd, because of that, I lack nothing. And what does that mean, I lack nothing? Well, he leads me beside quiet waters. He wants to give me rest, right? Or he, he makes me lie down in Green pastures, he wants to give me rest. He leads me beside quiet waters. He, he, what does he want to do? He wants to uh, refresh and replenish my emotions so I think right, so I see the world right. And then he wants to restore my soul. He wants to make sure that I am back in right relationship with God. This is the good shepherd that we all have in Jesus. And so here's kind of my closing question for us today. What need do you have in your body, in your mind, or in your soul? Where do you need God's healing or restoration the most? Physically, emotionally, or spiritually? Because I believe Jesus wants to meet you in that place today. He wants to restore your soul. I want to read one last section of scripture that will take us into a song and it is an opportunity for us to reflect on what we heard and, this, and reflect on maybe perhaps how God is speaking to you today. The song is called Come to Me. And the song speaks to this invitation that Jesus gives everyone. Nobody's excluded from this invitation. Our past doesn't exclude us from this invitation. Our present reality doesn't exclude us from this invitation. Where we are from doesn't exclude us what we are going through right now, everyone is invited. Jesus says, come to me. And this song is taken out of this idea in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Here's in fact what Jesus says. And, and I want you to think of it as Jesus saying these words to you today. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Back in January, I taught on this scripture verse and, and it can be confusing for us. We're not necessarily from a farming culture, all of us. And this idea of yoke is speaking to a wooden apparatus that you would put two ox under, two donkeys, two horses, to kind of pull the plow or pull the wagon. 
And so what Jesus is saying here, and I think we can misunderstand it because we can feel like I'm already going through so much and now Jesus wants me to take on something else. That's not what he's saying. You already have a yoke upon you right now and it is your way of living. It is your way of thinking. It is your way of feeling. That's your life. And what Jesus is saying, he says, take my yoke upon you. Let your way of living go. Let your way of thinking go. Let your way of feeling go and take my yoke upon you. And Jesus says, I'm going to come up under that yoke, my yoke with you and teach you how to live at my pace and in my ways. And I'm going to help carry all of the burdens and all of the things that are making you weary. This is the invitation of Jesus. We have Jesus, a good shepherd, who says, come to me. As the band leads us in this song, here's what I want you to think about. Where are you with Jesus' invitation to come to him? Because there is a with God life waiting for you. God wants to meet your needs physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I want to lead us in a prayer and then the band's going to lead us in this song. And I just want you to ask yourself, where do you need Jesus most in your life? And believe that he's going to come to you through this moment. Um, here's what I'd like you to do as we pray. I would like to ask everybody, if you're comfortable uh, in your homes, wherever you are, I want you to take a posture of receiving. Uh, this is a posture of receiving. Hands kind of open, palms up. This would be a posture of blessing, of giving. This is a posture of receiving. And I want you to take a posture of receiving. And then I just want to lead us in a prayer. And I'd like to invite you to say this prayer out loud after me. Jesus, I open my whole self to you. Body, mind, and soul. Meet me today where I need you most. Heal my body, bring peace to my mind, fill my soul with you. Amen.